Welcome back. The second cutting tool material that we are going to discuss are carbides. These are also called cemented carbides or sintered carbides because they are made using sintering process. Carbides are among the most important, versatile and cost effective tool and die materials for a wide range of applications. So apart from cutting tool applications, they are used in other tool and die applications as well. The carbides have high hardness over a wide range of temperatures. So in other words, they have high red hardness or hot hardness. They have high elastic modulus. So uh, they, they do not deform so easily. So that is an important characteristic as well. They have high thermal conductivity because you know that heat is generated during machining that is to be dissipated uh, from the cutting tool uh, so that uh, the temperature doesn't rise too much and the tool uh, does not actually develop what is called built up edge material that is being removed. And carbides also have low thermal expansion. So they do not uh, uh, expand uh, at, uh, at high temperatures. So that is an important property as well. So that is an, an important relationship uh, because uh, that, that will help us a lot in understanding uh, and comparing the cutting tool materials. And that's, that is this relationship that the harder is the cutting tool material, the higher is the cutting speed that we can achieve and higher is the cutting speed, the greater will be the material removal rate and hence higher will be the productivity or in other words, we can uh, remove more material, we can uh, machine more parts in lesser time. So the greater hardness actually helps us to achieve greater production rate. So carbides are actually harder than uh, HSS, but their toughness is lower than HSS. So this relation is very important and we will uh, come back to it once we conclude this uh, a discussion on cutting tool materials. There are two basic types of uh, carbides uh, for uh, use as cutting tool materials. We are having non-steel cutting grades and we are having steel cutting grades. Non-steel cutting grades are also called single carbides because we have only tungsten carbide with the cobalt matrix and steel cutting grades are also called composite carbides because we are having a titanium carbide and tantalum carbide added to a tungsten carbide and cobalt. So in other words, we are adding some other carbides to the single carbides, that is uh, the tungsten carbide. Now adding tungsten carbide in general increases wear resistance and hot hardness because it's, it's a hard material. So hardness and wear resistance increases as well as hot hardness because it has a high melting point. Increasing cobalt increases toughness. So that is the uh, benefit of these two materials, but we have to make a trade-off whether we need to increase the wear res resistance and hot hardness or we need higher toughness in a certain application. Adding titanium carbide and tantalum carbide further increases hardness, but at the cost of toughness. So more is the proportion of these two carbides. Uh, the higher will be the hardness, but uh, lesser will be the toughness. Here is a comparison. So we are having non-steel cutting grades where typical ingredients are tungsten carbide and cobalt and typical material that is machined uh, is aluminum, brass, titanium, and cast irons. In non, uh, so these are non-steel cutting grades. And in steel cutting grades, we are having uh, typical ingredients as titanium carbide and tantalum carbide in addition to tungsten carbide and cobalt. So uh, these are having some uh, alpha numeric uh, designation as well. So we are having C1, C2, C3, C4 under non-steel cutting grades and C5, C6, C7 and C8 under steel cutting grades. So steel cutting grades are generally used to machine 
carbon and alloy steel. So they are having higher hardness. So they are used to machine relatively harder work pieces. So as we move from C1 to C4 or from C5 to C8, we are actually moving from a roughing applications to finishing and precision finishing applications. So once again, high cobalt for maximum toughness and uh, uh, as we reduce cobalt, so low cobalt for maximum hardness. Uh, these uh, carbide tools are generally available as inserts. So inserts are individual cutting tools with several cutting points. So a square insert generally has eight cutting points. So four on one side and four on the other. And a triangular insert has six. So again, uh, three on one side and three on the other. Inserts usually are clamped on the tool holder uh, with various locking mechanisms. So inserts can be brazed to the tool shank, but this practice has largely been abandoned because uh, uh, brazing is a permanent joint. So after the insert wears out, you have to sort of discard the whole uh, cutting tool, including the shank as well. So clamps, uh, the inserts can be clamped and indexed. That is uh, something like this. So once, for example, this cutting edge wears out, you can unclamp the insert and use the other uh, cutting edge and uh, you can keep on doing so unless the insert uh, has been used. Uh, I mean, all the cutting edges have been used or worn out and you can replace this insert and use a new one using the same uh, same tool holder or same same shank uh, of the of the cutting tool. So uh, that is the benefit of using a mechanical or a screw mechanism instead of brazing the insert to the uh, to the tool holder or or to the shank. Carbide inserts are available in a variety of shapes. So we can have square, triangular, diamond, and round shaped uh, cutting, uh, cutting tool inserts. The strength of the cutting edge of an insert depends upon its shape. So the smaller is the included angle, the lower is the strength. So here the included angle is the largest, that is 360. So the strength is highest. It will reduce if the included angle is 100 degrees and further reduce if it is uh, 90 degree and so on. And in this case, this uh, shape will have the uh, lowest strength. So the cutting tool will chip easily. The chipping is a uh, tool failure um, mechanism or uh, the tool will break easily. Uh, so depending upon the application, whether you are going for roughing operation or finishing operation, and what is the workpiece material, you can choose among different shapes that are available. So uh, then we have the coated carbides. So we can coat the carbides that we discussed to further increase the hardness and other properties. So generally speaking, coated carbides have lives 10 times longer than those of uncoated. So by coating, actually, we can move to even higher cutting speeds that means even higher material removal rate, even higher productivity, so that in other words means reducing the time required for machining operation, increasing uh, uh, the number of parts machined. So as a whole, we are uh, reducing the production costs. Coatings have unique properties such as the friction between the cutter and the workpiece will reduce there will be higher resistance to wear and cracking. Uh, the coating acts as a diffusion barrier. So the workpiece material doesn't diffuse into the surface of the uh, cutting edge and higher hot hardness and impact resistance is also achieved. Commonly used coating materials are titanium nitride, titanium carbide, titanium carbonitride and aluminum oxide. So this is a very good summary. So first we had carbon steel. So for example, if the cutting speed achieved was, uh, sorry, cutting time actually that, that was required was 100 minutes. So as we developed high speed uh, steel cutting tool material, 
the machining time reduced to one fourth approximately. Then the cemented carbide reduced the time further, even one fourth of this time using uh, high speed steel cutting tools. And as we uh, kept on improving the carbide grades and we, we, we were able to coat the carbide, so the time required further reduced. And for triple coated carbides, for example, the time reduced to uh, about half a minute. So that is about 200 times improvement uh, in machining time, 200 times reduction in machining times, or in other words, 200 times improvement in productivity or production rates. So uh, these coatings generally are in the thickness range from two to 15 uh, micrometers. So we can coat multiple times. So the simplest case is single layer of coating, but we can have more than one. As we saw that we can even triple coat uh, a cutting tool insert. And the coatings are generally applied using either of the two techniques. We have chemical vapor depositions or CVD, or we are having physical vapor deposition. In the next segment, we will discuss ceramic cutting tool um, uh, material. Thank you very much.